So are you one of those poor souls that has user experience in your job title? That means you do all this kind of user experience stuff by yourself, don't you? That's your job, right? Of course, in truth, we know that user experience is a team sport. And in fact, you need the entire organization on board. Unfortunately, that task of making user experience happen and everybody on board, well, that falls to you. So good luck with that. But one thing you can do is start running some user experience workshops. They're a chance to get all those stakeholders thinking about user needs, a chance to educate them about best practice and get them excited about the potential. At least it would be if you do it right. Unfortunately, workshops can go horribly wrong. I've seen workshops which have devolved into departmental infighting and designed by committee. I've watched one or two big mouths dominate the meeting and no, I'm not talking about me. But don't let that put you off. It doesn't have to be like that if you run a workshop in the right way. What follows are a few of my top tips on running your next user experience workshop. Tip number one, focus on the user. Okay, I know it sounds kind of obvious, but make sure that your workshop focuses on users. It's amazing how often workshops can lose their focus and conversation turns to features and departmental objectives. Make sure you define your audience early on in the workshop, but don't stop there. Spend time discussing their needs, their journey, and what questions they have along the way. Tip number two, define your digital goals. Next up, make sure you've defined some goals for digital. These act as your framework for the discussion and stop the group wandering off on flights of fancy. Without clear goals, before you know it, you'll be launching yet another mobile app. If this is your first workshop, take time to define the goals for digital as part of the session. If you've run a workshop before, make sure you pin up the goals that all have agreed to so that everyone in the group can see and refer to them. That'll keep you on track. Number three, make it fun. A user experience workshop is as much about winning hearts and minds as anything else. It's about showing attendees the value of user experience and getting them enthused. As such, it's important that you have an engaging, fun day, a day where they can go away fired up about the possibilities. That means it's important to create momentum and a fun atmosphere. Without that, it'll just become another meeting, just another issue that they need to resolve. I like to make things competitive, set one team against another producing ideas, get them presenting those ideas in a talent show format, or do exercises against the clock. It never hurts to also have some free donuts and cupcakes as prizes for those that win a particular exercise. Tip number four, don't start by designing a web page. When talking about user experience, it's tempting to dive into wireframing key pages. This does have its place, but don't do it too early on in the workshop. You'll find that the workshop will get bogged down in politics, arguments over content, or personal opinions about design. Instead, try designing something like a book jacket to help people prioritize content. After all, a book jacket involves putting the most important content on the front, followed maybe by the back, the spine, and the inside flap. Because of this, that, um, is, it, because this is not a final deliverable, everyone will be much more relaxed and much less precious about it. I know it sounds strange, but also get people designing a reception area. Their choices about what furniture appears in there, what wallpaper there is, what pictures are on the wall and what signage can all inspire your design. They will talk about colors and textures and styles and other aspects of, of how they want to present themselves to the world, things that you can incorporate in the final design you produce. Tip number five is to vary your exercises. No matter how much fun the exercises you do are, they'll become boring if you're doing the same thing again and again. Make sure you've got a variety of different approaches. In one exercise, get them voting on a list of objectives. In the next, get them drawing pictures to represent their vision of your digital future. I'd like to tell you that all of these different exercises comes from years of experience. But in truth, I get most of my ideas from gamestorming.com. You can go along there and pick up loads of ideas for absolutely nothing. Tip number six, use voting to keep momentum. 
One thing that can kill momentum and fun in a workshop is discussing decisions. This is the point where things can turn into design by committee. One person expresses their own point of view and another one opposes them, and that can lead to confrontation. But do you know what? There's something even worse than confrontation, and that's compromise. Compromise is where the group tries to reach a consensus and ends up producing something that nobody is very happy with. One solution is to get people voting. Voting is a quick way of reaching a decision, but it can also be a level playing field. If a senior manager is in the room or a particularly dominant person, voting can stop them holding too much sway and give the quieter people a chance to express themselves. Tip number seven, set time constraints. Setting a time constraint is a great way of limiting endless discussion. It could also ensure that you don't get bogged down in too many details. I give participants far, few, far less time than they actually need to complete an exercise. It falls to me to work out all the details later. I just want to get their initial thoughts. In fact, if at least one participant doesn't complain that there's inadequate time to complete an exercise, then I obviously haven't done my job right and I need to make the future exercises even shorter. Tip number eight, make it interactive, not just discussion based. By now you'll have gathered that I'm not a fan of sitting around a table discussing things. It's something that uh, to do with the fact that I get bored so easily. It's amazing I'm going to make it to the end of this video. But the last thing you want from a workshop is for people to get bored. So there is some uh, worth there. So wherever possible, let's get people out of their seats and doing stuff. I, uh, now, just to be clear, I don't mean role playing exercises. For the love of all that is good, don't start doing that. After all, it has been outlawed by the Geneva Convention for some form of torture, I believe. But you can get people rearranging post-it notes on a wall or huddled around some big sheet of paper drawing things. Anything to get them up and moving. Another nice trick that I use is to not have a coffee break as part of the day. Instead, have refreshments on hand all day. Encourage people to help themselves and even pop out if they need to whenever they want to. That will keep people moving around the room and make sure that the whole thing feels less like an all day meeting. Tip number nine, spend time looking at barriers. The one problem with all this momentum and positivity is that it can be easy to sweep the problems and the barriers under the carpet. The trouble is that these kinds of things start seeping out and smelling after a while if you don't address them. That said, we don't want the workshop to become too negative or um, spend too much time looking at barriers. But what you can do is turn these barriers and problems into a game. Split your group into teams and get each team to write down as many problems or barriers as they can think of in the allotted time. Tell them that at the end of the time limit, the other team will have to find answers to your list of problems. So make sure those problems are as tough as possible. Then what you actually do at the end of the time limit, instead of swapping lists, you get the group to look for answers to their own set of problems. That'll teach them for being so negative. Not only will get this get a great laugh, it also allows people to work through the problems they've identified themselves and find a solution that satisfies them. This is not only a great way of addressing barriers, but also allows you to do so in a fun way that keeps people engaged. Okay, our final tip, number 10, refining and reporting back. Remember a UX workshop is not about details, rather it's about exciting people and getting them thinking. We don't want them to get bogged down in the details of the user experience because to be frank, you're much better placed and better qualified to deal with that than they are. But it is important people can see the fruits of their labor. Afterwards, um, when you finish the workshop, take time to refine and organize the outputs of the workshop and report it back to the group. Show the group how their ideas will be helpful in shaping the user experience that you design going forward. That way they can feel a sense of ownership over anything you go away and create. And that means they're gonna be much more supportive. So those are my top tips for now. To be honest, this post could have gone on forever and ever. So why not take a few moments to post your own tips in the comments below.